There's a trend going on on the internet right now. You're not that active on TikTok, so I don't know if you've seen it, but it's mm -hmm. about how people are realizing the sperm and like what a guy eats before partners even get pregnant Correct. impacts the future child and the future child's health. Right. Is that true? And can you speak on that for a second? Yeah, well, it's both the sperm and the egg. And the egg is more prone to damage because it lives in the, the woman's whole life. And cumulatively, it takes the onslaught of toxins she's exposed to, plastics, toxins, chemicals. The egg can be damaged before the child's born. Pro especially processed meats can lead to increased risk of having birth defects or childhood cancer when the mother's eating hot dogs and bacon and pastrami and things. Well, even not even when she's pregnant, even before the pregnancy, right? Mm -hmm. And likewise, the sperm, which is produced, new sperm is produced ongoing, that um, sperm is, of course, sensitive to being damaged as well by, the, by a poor diet. Not as much to the exposure of the whole life mm -hmm. as the woman's egg, but still it's damaged for the when the sperm is being produced. And but you see how guys are just having their minds blown that what yeah. they do in their life actually impacts the health or even getting pregnant fertility. I just think it's so funny, but I think it's great that that conversation is becoming mainstream. And we're saying here that the early life, not that your health is affected by your parents' diet before you're even born. And then you have the onslaught of the American way of life and that children are immediately trying to, parents think, oh, they want their children to eat more food and get bigger and grow and they feed them foods to promote growth. Mm -hmm. And those foods that are encouraged by society, you know, giving a lot of cheese and dairy and drink their milk and, you know, eat their meat. But it's mostly eggs and dairy that have more allergic potential. And then, of course, we know that we, the, in an American diet, you have the primary source of fat or animal fats and oils, which are both immune suppressive and promote asthma. So the combination between those animal proteins and the low level of plant-based vegetables. And all they do in a lot of these studies is they give like three to five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, or one study gave five servings of raw vegetables a day, and that showed the most power to, to cause, and then it acts like 90% of people reverse their asthma once they were getting five servings of raw vegetables a day. Wow. I, I use that acronym G-bombs, mm -hmm. and if you eat your G-bombs every day and you avoid the triggers, then people generally get well. But there's a time frame to getting well because the medications they're on keep them, keeps them chronically sick. So it's not enough to change their diet. We have to first get them off their beta agonists. So the rescue inhalers, like Ventolin, and albuterol um, are fast acting beta agonists. They are called, they're called rescue inhalers because you can't breathe <laughs> and you take a puff and you're, it makes you feel better right away. Yeah. Now those foods that are rescue used for emergencies are the ones that damage the lung the most. That if you start to use a rescue inhaler on a regular basis, it can cause chronic inflammation to the lung. It vasodilates, it makes you feel better, but the more you use it, the more you're gonna be asthmatic. So the first thing we have to do is get people off those inhalers. They're never gonna get well because they're chronically putting an irritant into their lung. 